had jij ons al twee handmicrofoons gegeven? Ik heb er hier één. Oh, je hebt, uh, er zijn er twee. Ja, ja. oh perfect. Ja. All right. Is Gustavo here yet? Gustavo, you're needed here at the creativity stage. Yeah, the scarf phone. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you straks wel wat meer vertellen erover. Yeah. Yeah. Did he escape? Did Gustavo escape? Oh, he's here. Yeah, take your time, man. <gasps> okay, good to have you over here as well. We're going to get started. Welcome to the semi-final presentations for the Mrs. Marathon Energy. And I want to hear from you. Are you excited for some pitches? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Here we go. So what's going to happen? Do you want to top that? <laughs> let's do it again. One, two, three. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> welcome. That was a big welcome, right? My name is Diederik. Diederik van Wingede. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I have my own uh, startup in open source hardware. I'm a software engineer and a business economist. And I, this is my 16th hackathon. I have participated in many, many hackathons, also won some prizes. And uh, then I got asked to be a mentor and an expert. And now for the past four hackathons, I've been organizing and on stage. And it's pretty awesome. But I have to say, to be here on stage, as a facilitator is nice, but to be in a team is always the most awesome experience that you can have. Of course, I want to say something about our fantastic sponsors. That is first the Ministry of Economic Affairs, the Utrecht region, and Mitros. I want that you give a big applause for these fantastic sponsors. Thank you very much. You made this possible. So a short introduction for those of you who don't know exactly yet what this is about. So for the past um, two days, we started actually on Wednesday night already, but the kickoff was Thursday morning. Teams have been working on the future of energy. And let me tell you something about that. As a world, we are moving from fossil fuels to clean energy, as you all know. We've been on that for several years, but now we are at a critical point where you see that the price of clean energy is dropping below the price of fossil fuels. And then it becomes interesting because now we can go to scale up to get everybody onto clean energy. And there are two themes that we introduced for this challenge that the teams can work on. The first theme is transforming cities. All the buildings, all the houses you have there how are you going to renovate them to change them into energy producing buildings or at least to be energy neutral? The other theme is being local smart because the thing is with uh, clean energy is that you go from centralized to decentralized. So you need to do a lot more coordination and you have to be smart about that. With those challenges on Thursday morning, teams, uh, people who had ideas came to us they did their pitches for one minute with the idea they had in their mind, and they got the opportunity to form teams around their ideas and to work on that for two days. And that's what I did. They worked super, super, super hard. We got a bunch of experts coming in as well, experts in the field of energy, 
and for the business marathon mobility for mobility and we also had experts on startups how to not fail your startups how to do problem finding how to do customer development and then yesterday we got also a pitch trainer here who, who trained the teams in getting the perfect pitch so that's what you're gonna see here today we asked this question, why are you here to some of the attendees on Wednesday evening when we had the informal meetup? And these were, are the things that people say, but I wanna do a quick round to some of the, the team members here and tell, ask them what they thought of the experience and what brought them here. I think this one is, is working. Hi, can you quickly share with us what you got out of this experience? Well, for the past two days, I learned a lot with my fellow teammates from other countries. So I saw another picture of how, because I'm Brazilian, so I see sustainability in one way and people from Europe see from other. I also learned a lot from the experts because I could see how the companies are working nowadays and how we yes. can change that. So it was very productive, I think. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you very much. I'm gonna ask one more. Over, over here. Can you share something about your experience? Um, yeah, um, what I liked about uh, the past two days was uh, the many ideas. Yeah. Um, well, I was participating in the energy uh, uh, part, but um, in the past two days, you had also you could also uh, hear things about the mo mobility thing, and that's and then you also learn something quite new, and you see also that's also they have also a lot of challenges which needs to which need to be tackled yeah so that was like uh, yeah a big eye-opener for me yes uh, yeah all right thank you very much yeah so I think the combination of, of energy and mobility that we have in the two challenges is interesting because we have many crossovers you're going to see if the the pitches also have these crossovers or not that's not um, super important but to, uh, just to learn that these areas are connected is relevant it's almost time. Today is judgment day. No, don't worry, you'll be fine. You've been working on this super hard for the past two days and uh, it's going to show all the work that you have done. Relax and you'll be fine. So how is it going to work? We're going to have three minute presentations followed by two minute questions and answers by the judges. And I'm going to introduce the judges in a minute. But the most important is to enjoy the ride, okay? Now we have some awesome judges here to see what you have come up with. And I'm going, the judges have a microphone and I'm going to ask you one by one to please stand up and uh, say your name and introduce yourself a little bit. All right, let's go. Yeah, Bastian, do you have the mic? Can you please? Good morning, all. My name is Sebastian Stafforst. Uh, I work uh, with Mitros. It's a housing company here in Utrecht. And I'm uh, super excited to be here and to uh, hear all your pitches and uh, to see you uh, to and to hear uh, what you've come up with. So I'm uh, extremely curious. Thank you. All right. Tony. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Yes, it's working now. Yes. Good morning, everybody. My name is Tony, Tony Schoen. It says here I'm from the university, which is only part of the story. I'm an independent consultant. So uh, I will give my independent judgment today to you. Uh, I have a background in uh, solar photovoltaics, in technology, in, uh, but also in fuel cells for cars, which maybe is part of the mo mobility question as well. So I'm very interested to, to see the crossovers between you. Uh, and look very much forward to hearing what you have been doing the last two days. Yes, all right, thank you. Roy. I am Roy Ellenbrook. Um, more than 20 years already experience, working experience in the renewable energy sector. And very happy and excited that we are reaching now this tipping point. Because after 20 years of waiting, it's about time, I think. So I'm also very curious to see what you, what your, what your ideas are about reaching and getting over this tipping point and uh, uh, make it, make it, make it happen for all of us. 
Um, um, I'm currently working for the energy fund of the municipality of Utrecht, which means I'm, I'm my, 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 my daily job is actually being a judge for many business proposals, so uh, uh, that's also the way I will uh, uh, in particular look at your proposals. I'm very excited. Wish you good luck. Okay, thank you, Roy. Hans. Hello, I'm Hans Kraai. I work for the, uh, the government here. Uh, 15 years ago, my first job was uh, at the Ministry of uh, uh, Department of Energy, uh, the National Department of Energy. Then I uh, did something completely uh, different. And uh, uh, 50 years ago, the energy transition started, I think, about. And uh, now I'm uh, uh, seeing what, uh, what it all turned out. And I'm very curious uh, what you uh, will uh, yeah, deliver uh, as, a, as a project in the energy transition. So uh, let's get it started. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can keep the mic. That's fine. So to do a, a quick run over of what the judges are going to be looking at is this. They're looking at the potential for impact and value for society, product and business model viability, originality, user experience and design, learnings and insights gained from potential users and customers, and execution and progress towards launch. These are all equally important, and they're going to see how you have been doing on those, those points. Then, the prizes, what's going to happen now? This is, these are the se semi-finals, I and mean, we're going to send teams to the finals. Uh, we're going to select some teams, we're going to be in the finals at six o'clock at the main stage. But in the end, there can only be one winner. And this one winner is going to earn a prize of 2,500 euros. And also, you get the opportunity to work with the lead partners which are the sponsors I just showed, to continue developing your idea. Exactly how that's going to take place, you're going to discuss it with them. All right. I think we are there. So what's going to happen now? I'm going to call each team li leader out one by one. I'm going to give them the microphone. And as soon as they start talking, Pepijn here is going to start a timer of three minutes. And Pepijn has my, my phone and is also on the display how much time you have left. So if you're presenting, you can sort of sneak how much time you have left. But I have to say that three minutes are three minutes and not one second more. So as soon as the three minutes are finished, Pepijn is going to start clapping because he will hear the sound from my phone, and we all start clapping, all right? And then the judges will have the opportunity to ask some questions for two minutes. You have a question, yeah. Uh, could you sign us uh, if there is only 30 seconds left or something? Yeah. So we can adapt? Yeah. Uh, let me, let me I, I understand your question. Let me see how we can do that. Because, we, sorry? Yeah, can you raise your, yeah, but you, are, you have the screen like that and you have to constantly look. Yeah, you think that will work? Okay, yes, good one, we will do that. So as I was saying, the judges will have the opportunity to ask some questions for two minutes and then the next is up. What I'm going to do for the first pitcher who's going to be here, he will need some time to set up the slides, right? So you need to wait a little bit for that. For the second one who's going to pitch, and I will announce that, you can already come here and start your slides. Well, the previous pitcher will be here answering the questions for the, for the judges. So we don't lose time there. And also maybe a good idea for the team leaders when the judges are going to ask questions to, to get your entire team up here. Because maybe some people know more of this part and other people know more of that part. And then we have a chance to see all of you who were in the team. Yeah? All right. Let me see, I, I made a list about the order of the pitches. Are there any questions so far? Anything that's unclear? No? Okay. So first up is Osman. So 
Talk in them? I reageert op mijn hallo. Als hij in de buurt is, dan zijn we niet goed te lokken. Is dit, heb je deze in PowerPoint gemaakt? Ja. Ja, ja dus uh, ik denk dat het beter is om dan deze laptop te gebruiken. Want uh, dat, ik heb namelijk Linux op mijn, uh, mijn laptop. Zetten we die even erop. Ja. Wil jij een klikker gebruiken? Wat is jouw... Ja? Oké. Okay. Ja, die ga ik aan hem geven. Ja. Oké, okay, Osman. Are you ready? Does the clicker work? You want to test that? Ja, yeah, oké, okay, great. Oké. Okay. Osman is with the team Project Pivot. You have three minutes. I'm going to give you the mi microphone. Give a big round of applause for Osman. <laughs> is, it, is it on? Fuck, yeah. Okay, guys, thank you. I'm, uh, um, I'm Osman. I'm a construction engineer working at Meatwars. I partnered up with my uh, uh, friend here, Zakaria El Baroudi. Uh, who is their master's in uh, urban environmental development in the uh, University of Wageningen. Uh, I actually started with a quote, uh, we got to make a change, it's time for us people to uh, start making some changes, let's change the way we eat, let's change the way we live. Uh, also people can see I'm quoting Tupac, so I just quoted a gangster rapper on a science convention. Uh, with this I wanna actually want to trigger uh, to also change uh, the way of we, thi we see things. We need to think uh, when, when it comes to energy, we, we are constantly stuck in a certain way of thinking. And that's where Project Pivot, our, our project comes in. So um, uh, we want to change the uh, change of view on how we look on uh, energy. Uh, well we're our main focus on this uh, whole project is the housing companies. What housing companies at the moment really do is like focus on how we uh, be can be energy sufficient. We focus on technologies. Uh, let's play, put some sun panels up uh, uh, up on there. Uh, let's put some more insulation in it. Let's put some uh, a lot of technique in it, which would use uh, which maybe um, use more sustainable energy and will uh, will lessen the demand of uh, of energy. But what we tend to forget is like when we put in uh, the, that the buildings are not using the energy. The consumers, the occupants in the building are using energy. So that's where also, uh, we should also start more focusing on that. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the change we want to see. But because uh, when we put tenants in this house and we, ch we tell them how to use uh, the machinery in the house and how to use the energy in the house, we give them like thick manuals, like, okay, this you have to, this you have to do to uh, cut down your energy bill. In the end, nobody understands it. And everybody continues their old behavior. So, uh, when we look at uh, the, the Trias Energetica, we see like, hey, uh, the first, uh, the main focus should be minimizing demand for energy and then use sustainable energy. We are, we're actually not going to talk even about using fossil energy fuel. And demanding, uh, minimizing demand for energy could cause, uh, oh, just by changing behavior, you can actually go uh, to, uh, according to the Agentschap, you can uh, uh, make an average saving of 10%. But why is our focus on, on uh, sorry, <laughs> on the housing companies? Well, volume is key. 
in the end, like in Utrecht, 48% uh, of the house, uh, houses are social housing companies. And uh, what housing companies, uh, th they don't uh, make any money. But uh, what <laughs> I'm sorry, 30 seconds, I've got to make, go to make it fast. But they need to change behavior. They want to change behavior by uh, making the, uh, the occupants part of the solution, not part of a problem. And we want to do that by using already existing apps to give motivation, triggers, and ability to change their behavior. And what we, what we want to do is like use already existing apps in 100 houses in Lunette. We can start actually Monday. We alre Utrecht already inserting slim smart meters. We need to All use right, our smart meters. Thank you very much, Alvin. <laughs> okay, great. Have your team up here. Wow, 33 minutes is fast. Yeah, that is super fast, right? <laughs> Foof. <laughs> okay, judges, up to you. Two minutes. Two minutes of questions. David. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for this. Uh, Presentation. Yeah, I'm very curious of the remainder of your presentation. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I guess you had more details to add. Yeah. Uh, well, not, not not that much. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so your concept is about uh, using existing yeah. apps yes. and yeah. technology. Yeah. And give them to your occupants. Yeah. We as uh, as uh, from I'm, I'm from a housing company itself. Uh, what we yeah. we have like uh, uh, 1,800 new tenants every every year. And that's just and that's just metros. Okay. Uh, we and in general, it's just more. Yeah. And we need to uh, give those apps to the new tenants. Yeah. Did you do any calculations on on the technical or the financial feasibility? You have to buy your 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 equipment, give them to your tenants. Do you have? We uh, we actually did you do some calculations. No, because we uh, uh, we uh, assumed that a lot of our tenants have smartphones. Uh, the, 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 so the, hard, the software is there already. The hardware is already in being installed by Utrecht City, 110,000 of smart meters by 2019. We can use the data from those smart meters. Thank you also for your pitch. A question, how do you make sure your tenants are going to use the apps? Yeah, we have a uh, we add a, a gaming uh, a game uh, game ability uh, like uh, to motivate them uh, uh, to see like if you have a one building a high rise building where uh, occupants have in a similar building you can see like hey I'm using more than average less than average uh, you you can send them push messages hey you're above average right now maybe you should uh, wash tomorrow instead of today and also uh, give them the trigger to uh, well as well uh, to uh, uh, to he turn down the heat maybe. You can send a push message just by based on uh, uh, average data, and you can put in a gaming uh, ad, uh, ability. Because just now we we want to yell harder than the other group. Do we j that's just a psychological thing. If you can see that you can use use more than the other uh, occupants in the same building, you will uh, it, there will be a trigger to use less. All right. Thank you. Final question. Thank you very much for your interesting uh, perspective uh, on, on behavior and, um, and, and, and the occupants of the, of the houses. Um, d do you have any idea how much you can save by, by implementing this perspective? Well, uh, according to studies uh, of uh, the Ministry of Internal Affairs uh, done by uh, Agentschap uh, NL, uh, you can save up to 10% uh, on electricity and 14% on gas just by changing behavior. And we don't need uh, new houses with, uh, me uh, 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 with measurements. We can start tomorrow just by 60-year-old uh, buildings. We don't need at the moment. We can start tomorrow. We don't have to wait for innovation. And, and how, All right, and how that was the final question. Okay. All right, one more round of applause for Project Pivot. <laughs> Yes. Where is the? Uh, maybe he put the clicker here. Yes. There you go. Cool. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Next up is Aten. David Aten. Aten. David. Aten. Yeah. I'm going to give you the microphone. Okay. You have your three minutes. Is the timer set up? Almost. All right, give it up for Aten. Good morning. I would like you to visualize the typical scene of a family enjoying their time at their house. And like all the families, they work very hard to raise their money every month. Now, what if I tell you that every year in the Utrecht region, 150 million euros are paid from these families directly to the energy companies? And the main reason for that is that these families live, most of them, in this type of houses, which are very old houses 
built after the Second World War between 1960s and 1970s, and they are not energy efficient at all. So we started this campus party thinking about how to help to move from these houses to these houses. But after that, we started speaking with the experts and with Mitros and the companies and Swift and all that, and another question arose, and it was like, what if we have the technology now to build these houses, but we don't know, but the people inside of the houses do not know how to use that technology? So then we started speaking with the actual tenants, and we thought, and we want to ask them if, we, if they would like to become part of a project that can, save, that can help, her, help them save money, uh, in order to lower their energy bill. So we want to introduce you to the ATEM project. And the most powerful thing about the ATEM project is that it focuses first in the tenants inside of the house to help them lower their energy bills. And that lowering energy bills can be an investment for the house tenants. So it focuses in the both parts, in the tenants and the house, uh, housing companies, in order to help them improve their building and save even more money, up to 15% of savings each year, in order to, to get through this energy energetic uh, neutrality. The, from the experienced user point of view, they could, uh, with a display, they could, um, um, sorry, they could uh, see if month by month they are doing better or worse. And the good thing about this project is that it starts at cost zero, so there's not in initial investment needed, and it's pretty much uh, huge uh, scalable because 70% of the houses in the Utrecht region, they are not energetic efficient. So only with Mitros customers, because we focus uh, on Mitros because we were working with them, only using Mitros customers, we have calculated that we can estimate the savings 13 million euros each year, which is equivalent to 433 electric cars or 6,000 mit uh, square meters of solar panels. So we're pretty confident about this. We're pretty confident about this. We would like to start a pilot project with a, with a building or maybe a, a bunch of house of, of tenants, but we would like you to, to ask to you if you can help us to get to the next stage because we are engineers and we are pretty confident about this. We come from different backgrounds and we would like to ask you if, if you can help us to start this as a pilot project for everybody. Thank you very All much. All right, give it up for Atem. <laughs> okay, again, two minutes of questions for the jury. Team is already coming up here. And uh, Martin, you're up next. Th thank you. Um, the, the goal of your uh, project is clear, but what, what's your project product? Yeah, so, so the project is to design a system to encourage people, the tenants in this case, to improve their energy efficiency. So we would create almost like a reward system as where the person that uh, saves more energy, it will get like a discount on their rent based on how much it's saved. And in by steps, this person that saves more, it will get the apartment or the flat renewable first then the other one that would create an internal race to see who would save more. And it, this program would go forward by steps. So the first person gets the apartment done, then the second one sees, oh, that person got a new apartment and it's paying even less rent than I am. So I wa also want this. So it would escalate it as a snowball effect. And this, in the end, will generate um, maybe the, the company itself could put solar panels and get rid of the energy bill and it will go to another building, this project, and then it goes forward in a loop. Um, how do you do the uh, calculations for the uh, estimated savings? Well, we took the, the average consumption of the, the target families, and then we were working with, with Shift and with, sorry, and with Mitros, and we uh, estimated that we can save at least 10% or 15%, and when the snowball effect is created and the house is actually improved, we can save up to 30%. So we use the, the amount of customers of and, and the houses that, uh, that Mitros run, which has uh, 30,000 in the Utrecht region, and getting that 30% uh, of savings with the average consumption in the energy bill, we 
get to the, well, it's a very rough number, but I, I th we think it's pretty close to the, so it's the average saving with the families. All right, final uh, question. D uh, did you ask Mitros whether they would like to invest in this project? We were, we were working with Mitros and uh, apparently uh, we, we thought we, they told us that they were uh, trying to renovate their, their houses. So every, everything started with uh, trying to, to get those houses renovated. And we actually uh, were aware that the, the customers, the tenants, they don't like that much this renovation process. So this was in the middle term about how to start saving from the very beginning and at the same time renovate the house little by little, like first the isolation of the windows, then small improvements in the end that they can help us to get to the energy neutrality. All so right. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. One final round of applause for Aten. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Mai. The clicker? Do you have that? Is there? Okay. Do you want it? Will you the clicker gebruiken? Is it good or not? Yeah, that's what we're looking at. Oh, we do. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. Oh, we do. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. Oh, we do. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. Oh, we do. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. You're going to get three minutes again like everybody. Here you have the mic. Give it up for Mesh. Thank you, everybody. I want to talk about something that's mostly invisible, and it should be. It's the energy system. Just imagine a power outage of a couple of hours. It would disrupt society big time. Luckily, we have a very robust energy system and that doesn't happen. It's based on fossil fuels, burning them in big centralized power systems, and it works fantastic. You shouldn't forget to click, of course. However, I don't want to power our future with fossil fuels. I want to do it with renewables. And renewables, a renewable energy system means a distributed energy system based on wind and solar. Those are unpredictable. And the components in the network will increase, the complexity will increase, and the, the management will be driven by data. Uh, in need of uh, the, the coordination that is required to do this will explode. But who want, to, who, want we to who want we to trust with our data about our energy system? Is that a new Google or Facebook? We propose to match our decentralized energy system with the decentralized communication network. And it's based on the blockchain technology. A blockchain is a database that is safe, transparent, and distributed among all the uh, networks, all the devices in the network. We call it MASH, uh, and it suits a wide range of services that are perfectly suited to handle the needs of a future energy system. Uh, for instance, Imagine a neighborhood like Lombok a few years in the future. It will have a lot of PV systems, a lot of electric cars connected to mesh, and, it, and a PV system will be able to directly communicate with an electric car, ask him to store excess energy, and seal the deal with a small transaction. So for who is mesh? Mesh is interested, interesting for transmission system operators, DSOs, balance responsible parties, energy suppliers, everyone who needs to keep the energy system in balance. And revenues will come from the small transaction fees that are taken from the transactions that take place. Well, I am Martin, my teammate sitting over there, Fabian. And we came up with MESH. It's versatile, transparent, and distri distributed. And we want 
us to be part of a sustainable future together with everyone. Thank you. All right, give it up for me. Okay, job well done. You also have two minutes. The judges can ask you some questions. And next up here, Gustavo. Thank you very much for your interesting um, uh, presentation. Um, uh, do you have any idea how, how much uh, of the savings will be with this system? The savings? Energy savings, yeah. Uh, it's how not directly uh, suited at energy savings, but you can optimize your energy system locally. Uh, so for instance, if the sun is shining, but there is not a, lo a lot of demand, uh, Nowadays, you just feed it back into the grid, but with such a system, you can use it locally and in an intelligent manner. Right. So. Uh, but what is your business proposition? Who will invest and why? Um, and how do you earn it back? Hmm? And how do you earn your investments back then with your system? Um, well, with a system like a, like a blockchain, um, you make a, an investment, and the longer you keep the network up, uh, the more the value will increase. It's uh, similar to the, the Bitcoin network. Um, so yeah. So you're, you're saying it's similar to the Bitcoin network. That means that it, it can already be built. The ICT infrastructure uh, is already there. So we could use it as from tomorrow. Yes, this uh, technology is already available. The ICT solutions are present. Uh, in New York, in the area of Brooklyn, there is currently a small pilot that is slightly comparable to this. Um, and they implement not like a distributed network, but a um, decentralized network for just one area. And um, this is not like an, an investment you need to make for the technology. It's more like a solution for problems that will be there when the energy will be um, generated, not centrally, because we are moving away from uh, fossil fuels, and that's the way uh, fossil fuels work, but they won't be doing that anymore, so it, the, the production will be decentralized or distributed even uh, from your car, from your solar panels, and so we need this management real time at the spot where it happens, and a solution like this is needed and there will be a lot of data, but the question is how to manage this data and how to earn from this. This blockchain technology is a way to earn money from uh, these transitions. All right, final question. Does this network work uh, local or is it national or what's the scale are you thinking about? Uh, th this network is actually scalable, um, but it would work the best actually if it is uh, applied on a large scale, city scale maybe. Um, or bigger actually because the entire world will um, transition, make the transition towards uh, distributed energy and w uh, while the, the energy is everywhere, the data is everywhere, the transa transactions are everywhere and we are uh, like an organism that just breeds and keeps itself in balance, uh, preferably on a global scale actually. All right, one final round of applause for Mesh. Okay, thanks guys. Then we're going to have the final pitch over here from Gustavo. Gustavo, are you ready? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna give you the microphone. You have three minutes like everybody. There you go. Good luck, okay. give it up for, damn, I forgot your name, man. And, and Renergy well, is right there. Renergy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, give it up for Renergy. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. We are Renergy team, smart consuming. So the thing is, the green energy and the clean energy have, uh, are the energy for the future, but they have this unstable production problem. Uh, the thing is, they have a uh, difference between uh, the demand, they this creates a difference between the demand and the supply curves. So the government, so the, so the government has this big issue that is how to provide a stability to the system that is uh, the sources from renewable energies. So the thing is, uh, 
would you like, are you willing to receive discounts to buy things in your favorite brands? Yeah, everybody likes discounts, right? So, we cannot influence the weather, but we can influence people behaviors. Uh, the key is to make people consume energy at the right time. So, based on information and the technology that we already have, we design a platform that gives people credits to use uh, for use uh, and consume energy at this right time. So, imagine like this: uh, wake up in the morning and I receive this message. This message, uh, congratulations! You just received 100 credits for being a smart consumer. Then I, I get in the app and I click it and I see the discounts that I have for today to buy with those uh, credits that I earn. This is a good thing because we can control the time that the, the, that the credits are given and with this we solve the problem from the for the government which is balance the energy demand. Uh, so for who do we create value? We create for the residents because they are receiving the coupons and the discounts we create and for the energy providers and the government because we make the energy uh, supply more uh, stable. We also create value for the brands because we connect consumers and connect sellers. And you and me, of course, because everybody uses energy. So how do the revenue works? Like people save energy and they, we give them credits. So they go to the stores and they buy the credits and they change the credits for the, the products. So for every transaction, we receive a part of that uh, amount of money. So this is a solution for the government and for the energy providers. So they can we can have their support as uh, subsides, for example. So we are the energy, uh, we smart consuming. We are for young minds with big dreams. And what you need right now is a big dreamer who can support us to change the future. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Renergy. You can keep the mic because you're going to answer some questions. Have your team Guys, up here. Can you come over here? All right, two minutes for you as well. Um, thank you very much. So you will try to influence uh, consumers to buy specific goods based on credits they get. Uh, the thing is, we want to change people's people behavior to consume energy at certain periods of time when mm -hmm. the energy supply is higher. So to change people's behaviors, we gave them the incentive. So we count every time that they use more energy during that period of time, they earn some credits that can they can use to change uh, for uh, products or something, discounts. Oh, it's, a it's kind of a brand loyalty, or a loyalty pro program. If you if you save energy, you get the credits to buy your products. Well, well, uh, okay. Oh, well, the thing that we want to achieve is um, renewable sources are aren't inclusionable. They are mm -hmm. uh, because of the sun, the weather isn't something we can change. And the government is uh, getting this problem, where they have to manage a, pr a system, a grid that isn't stable. And we want to provide a solution out of the customers, the energy users, mm -hmm. in this case, to, for example. Um, we want to flatline those high peaks yeah. they are using. And for example, they get credits and they can use those credits to, or for example, um, get a discount on their favorite brand, but also invest in um, uh, cream peas, for example, or something like that. So it's something that they want and everyone who wants to be a part of it can be a part of it. And did you test this with, with consumers? Do you know if, if, if consumers want this system? Um, well, we have been asking some people, but we haven't been on a, gr on a grand scale, for example, but we have been asking some people we know, some people, um, just uh, feedback experts, we asked, uh, we talked to people, um, we knew how the system works, for example. I don't know if that asking answers your question. Yeah. All right, final question. Yeah. So, uh, if I understand, you also work with uh, price yielding, uh, just as in... Um, uh, rental cars or hotels or uh, airplane tickets. So if there's a high demand, the price is also higher or? No, it's not. Or um, is it only with coupons? Uh, w w um, the credits, we are creating credits, it's not valuable. It's something they gain, but they cannot cha exchange it with other people. It's something for them. So um, for example, um, I have a washing machine and I have the choice to use it at six o'clock. When everyone uses their washing machine, 
but I also can check my app and see, oh wait, I can achieve uh, extra credits if I use it like at eight o'clock and no one is using it. And there's an energy supply, green energy supply, that's um, not used. And by doing so and by uh, personalizing those um, times for the people, we are creating a way to stabilize the grid because there is a problem. and. We are trying to find a solution. All and right. We're a solution. Okay, thank you. Final round of applause for Renergy. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, man. Good job. Okay, judges, now it's going to be up to you to decide who are going to go to the finals. I'm not going to give you a lot of time, a short 10 minutes. We're, we're going to go find a place where you can sit by yourself. We're going to be back here announcing the finalists seven minutes before 12. Got that seven minutes before 12.
Okay. All right, let's get together again. We're going to announce the finalists in just a minute. Have a seat. Yeah, gather around. Okay, come here, guys. I asked the judges two minutes ago if they could be ready in one minute. I still see them debating. So it's gonna, it looks like it's going to be a tough decision. You see that, guys? It's going to be a tough decision for them to decide who of you is going to the finals. Which basically means that all four of you were really, really good. But unfortunately, we can just... We can send only three, three up there. But uh, as you already said, you learned a ton, right? That's great. Okay, time's up for the judges. Judges, this is Marathon Energy. Please get over here. Don't keep us worried any longer. We are so nervous waiting for you. All right, yes. Okay, yeah, Tony, Tony, it's better that you keep use uh, the hand mic. Yeah, we started. So, so uh, please, please sit down for one second, then I'll ask you to come up here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm gonna say something yeah, about you, yeah. and you cannot say it about yourself. I saw you there, I thought you had a really tough decision, and I think that's really awesome. Which means that we basically have four teams that are awesome, but unfortunately you can, you can only choose three to go to the finals. Okay, come on, Tony. Don't okay. keep us waiting. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes, indeed, we had a very tough discussion, and we had, uh, well, we had a tough, it was, it was difficult for us to choose. And what we liked about all the four pitches is that they all, uh, none of them went into the, uh, uh, the uh, technology for the users. They all spoke about the behavior of the users, try to influence the behavior of people in the consuming energy and not, going, not coming up with new appliances or new, new, new techno technical systems. At least three of them. The one presentation, Mesh, about the network technology, which was quite of a different nature, of course, and uh, was very surprising for me to learn this. So we had a tough discussion. And we c came up with uh, three teams who would like to uh, go to the uh, finals this afternoon. Um, and the first one uh, would be uh, the one which I liked and we liked all about uh, the very innovative technical system coming from a very different background, which, uh, which we liked all very much, which, which is the, the MESH. All proposal. right, MESH. Martin, please come up here. Okay. Uh, the second group we would like to go to the, uh, the finals um, is the team who works very much on consumer behavior, very effective measures, which we also know from different, from other fields of technology, uh, the, the car lease market, for instance, or the, uh, the airplane booking system, where we try to influence, influence people's behavior by introducing uh, a price difference, uh, which was essentially done by the Renergy team. Which All we right, like Renergy, uh, Gustavo. Over here. Um, and the third team, we would like to go to the finals. One of the two we had to choose, which worked very closely with the Bitros housing, of course, 
and we would like to send the Aten group to the finals. Aten, David, all right. Uh, which doesn't mean that we didn't like the, the pivot proposal, which was very um, uh, innovative, but on the other hand, very uh, straightforward. Um, and one of the reasons why we, we felt it was not good enough to go to the, uh, the, uh, uh, the finals at this stage is also because of the, uh, well, the things we heard and learned here from you on during the pitch. Um, so it was very hard for us to, to judge about that. Uh, for the other three, we also would like to make some recommendations, uh, maybe to strengthen your proposal this afternoon. And we, 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 off, we offer to do that after the judging, yeah, great. the next half hour or so, Yeah, if you like. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very okay, much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So that was pretty awesome, guys. You're in the finals. How do you feel about that? Just one word. How do you feel about that? Very, very good. It yeah, was, uh, yeah, you? Exciting. Exciting? I, I'm very sad. No, of course yeah. not. <laughs> okay, good, good. Okay, what I'm going to do, we're going to have some, one more round of big applause for these finalists, and I'm going to do then some final announcements and thank yous. All right? Here we go. Thank you, finalists. Congratulations. Okay, have a seat, guys. Thanks. You did it. Oh, I should have had that slide up right then, right? <laughs> so what's going to happen next? Re uh, for the teams, please exchange contact details and stay in touch. And if you want to experience more of this stuff, look around where you live. There are these kind of things going on all the time. And keep on hustling. And don't forget the awesome campus party experience. Then I also want to thank the judges for their awesome work in helping to decide who's going to the finals. I understand we also have something for you as a present. Yeah, do you want to give it to them? Sure. Yeah. I guess what I guess what this is. Guess what this is. Okay, and of course, it's not over yet. We will see you back at six o'clock at the main stage right over there. And then we are going to see the finals of the Business Marathon Energy and the finals that you haven't seen, the pitches that you haven't seen yet, the finals of the Business Marathon Mobility. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>